see, I like the look of this. The container and everything all built together. It's really cool. You know, in this part of Brazil, in Bahia, I see lots of people utilizing uh, full and half containers for all kinds of creative stuff. These, uh, I think, are the bathrooms here, for example. Yeah, it's kind of cool, huh? Very rustic and uh, interesting looking. And then look at this one, too. The back end is a container and the front end is like a bamboo porch. So, so interesting. This would be awesome to put something like this together uh, next to our house at the Sichu. Wow, that would be awesome. So a lot of uh, orchids are transplanted into coconuts like you see here and uh, hung from trees all over Brazil. And as you can see, the result is exceptional. Look at this. Absolutely stunning. You know, that's the advantage of living in a, in a tropical climate because it never gets cold. So we're thinking about putting a water tank behind our house inside a tree, much like what you see here. Uh, Hobson, the general contractor, said that would be a great way to, to not have to build a platform made of concrete or something. We, he could just put the water tank inside the tree like this. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. And then Elsie and I have been talking about uh, making raised planters for our vegetable garden. And this is an exceptional way of doing so. Basically, it's just, uh, I think, aluminum right here uh, on, on wood frames. And it's raised off the ground. That way... You know, you're working in, in an environment that uh, is void of wildlife like snakes and things like that who otherwise might like to hang out and interrupt your workflow, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I'm not sure what the cost of these things is, but if they're affordable, I can completely see us planting a couple of these uh, right around the front door of our house. So this here is Japanese grass. Uh, I believe this would look much better uh, than the natural grass that's uh, surrounding the house, which tends to grow high and, you know, it becomes a safe haven for snakes and lizards and this and that. So. We're definitely going to replace the grass there with this Japanese variety. So there are tons of beautiful big bougainvilleas all over the place here as well. Uh, I would love to get my hands on the largest bougainvillea bush I can find um, and plant it. Because who has the time to wait, right? <laughs> when you can have immediate gratification, why wait? It all comes down to how much, right? Beautiful, beautiful bougainvilleas. Mm -hmm. And this, this is called Renda Portuguesa. Mm -hmm. oh, my mom used to have big one with this. Well, we're going to have a balcony pretty much like this, yeah. except uh, it's going to be like a seating area on top. Yeah. So we will very much have something like this yeah. where you can hang, you know, 15, 20 things just like they have. Mm -hmm. It's going to look awesome. And we can get furniture that looks like this, like rustic furniture. Mm -hmm. That would be so amazing, Elsie. So at uh, Elsie's Sichu, we have tons and tons of these huge bushes called bromelias. And they retain water. And so because they retain water, they attract small wildlife like frogs and lizards. And because that's a food source, it then in turn attracts snakes uh, and all that. So we want to minimize all that uh, at the Sichu. So we are at this place to see if they've got people that would be willing to buy the bromelias from us and they can just show up with the machine to dig them out and uh, free up space and we'll just fill it up with soil and uh, plant the Japanese grass like they have here and uh, it'll be much more uh, user-friendly for us. Right, Elsie? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Beleza. So this here, guys, is uh, Brazilian gambiarra, right? Where you take an old bottle and you recycle it, or you repurpose it. You find this kind of example all over Brazil. You know, it's in America, everybody goes to Home Depot, loaves and buys stuff. Here people take great pride and pleasure in making stuff. That's Gambia. <laughs> so we're at this uh, construction place, not far from uh, where the house is being built, and we're here to buy a tank for the water, a water tank, and also a septic tank. So let's go see. So she says she has two tanks, one big on the floor, one small in the up, and then she puts a few spoons of treatment powder, mm -hmm. and then in one day, the water is clear, so you can push up with the pump. This is with the pump? With the pump, yeah. Uh, this is drinking water, right? Yes, and you can take shower, wash your dishes, everything. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It just spoons of. What, what did she put in? What spoons of what? A Clorox. Uh -huh. And. So the recommendation made to us by this lady is that uh, she also lives in a situation with just her husband, and uh, they have a 3,000 liter water tank underground. That's where the water comes in. Uh, from the well. She then treats it with Clorox and something else and then it's uh, ready to be pumped to the rooftop uh, 1,000 liter tank which is the one that feeds shower and drinking water to the to the house through a filter. The drinking water through a filter and the shower water doesn't need the filter. So that's what we uh, ended up buying uh, a 1,000 liter tank for the top, a 3,000 liter tank uh, underground and uh, the smaller of the two septic tanks for two people that ought to be sufficient uh, and we have it pumped uh, once a year or so maybe not even once a year unless I eat a lot of mangoes if I eat tons and tons of mangoes well it's gonna have to be pumped every three months because you know what happens when you eat lots of mangoes <laughs> if you watched one of my other videos <laughs> You're so pretty. And you've got the perfect spot for a nap. So here in Brazil, when you buy things, uh, like in a store like this, in small town Brazil, they are happy to extend you credit for 30 days. They don't ask for any guarantees. They don't ask for any deposits. It's just because everybody knows everybody. So we just got done paying our bill for the last 30 days where we had bought bricks and roofing tiles and uh, lumber and all kinds of stuff. And they didn't ask for any payment. So 30 days went by and we just paid that. Isn't that kind of cool? You don't, you don't find that too many other places. These are the bromelia bushes that I was talking about. Uh, they're pretty dense and as you can see they hold water and I'm sure there are tons of snakes in there. <laughs> so we're going to be getting rid of a lot of them. Uh, maybe replanting them elsewhere away from the house. jackfruit the proper way know, it tastes like chicken yeah. it really tastes like chicken right? just waiting for mm -hmm. the jacks and especially because those jacks are the the kind that we call soft jacks jacamole mm -hmm. so i don't like to eat them when they are raped when they're ripe ripe uh -huh. uh, ripe <laughs> 
and so I can wait until they have the right size, yeah. but it's too green. And I can make a chicken vegetarian. Yeah, vegetarian yeah. chicken. Yeah. Tastes awesome. I've, I've had it. Uh -huh. So let me show you something, guys. I'm very disappointed at something that took place oh. yesterday. Uh, Elsie had hired this guy to clear up the area in front of the meters, but he took it upon himself to chop down an entire section of this privacy hedge. And so the net result is now when we sit on the balcony here at the back, everybody and their uncle that walks by can see us. I'm so disappointed because, you know, landscaping takes a long time to grow back. So there's a lesson to be learned from this. Anywhere you're building something, whether it's here in Brazil or whatever country you're watching this from, it is a very good idea for you to be present pretty much at all times. Uh, if little details are important to you, like they are to me. Uh, I'm a detailed, detail-oriented person, and to me, this kind of goof-up would never have happened had I been here and had I seen what he's up to. I'm sure he didn't uh, have ill intentions. He was just misinformed, right? So my advice to you is if you're building something and you've got people, people working for you, be there as much as you can to tell them exactly what to do, what not to do. Also currently, as anybody drives by or walks by, they can see right through this gate uh, and right above it as well. And Elsie and I have decided we're going to privatize this by putting some bamboo, bamboo screens so that uh, it's not as readily visible to the casual passerby. <laughs> So that's the electrician, his name is Edson, uh, and he's putting the conduits and the electric wiring is going to go through these conduits into the, into the various plugs and uh, switches.